We are back to that celebratory time of the year when we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. At the same time, because of that, we have opportunity to create legacy moments for our children, for our households, for our families in the kitchen as we practice hospitality. And that's why in today's video, I want to share a few recipes that you can work with for your breakfast during Christmas so that you can make this time of the year special for you and for your household. And I'm also working with most of this on the Jiko so that you can be able to bake whether you have an oven or not and I'm doing it the easier way as you will notice. Please join me. Welcome to Recipes and Hospitality with Clara. This is a channel where we share recipes that are simple, easy to do at home with ingredients toned down, as you will see, to enhance your hospitality for the glory of God. And if you're new here and this is the kind of content you like, kindly consider subscribing, hit the notification bell. You'll be notified every time I upload new content. I upload this kind of content that is very simple to make at home and the ingredients are most likely available right where you are. So we are back to that season celebratory and an opportunity also to fellowship with family members, with friends, and one of the ways of doing it is over food and that's why we are working on these recipes that I hope will be a blessing or at least trigger you to even more creative ideas in the kitchen as you seek God to have a fruitful blessed season this year. As is always our custom, we will pray as we trust the Lord to be with us because he's the one who helps us to be creative in the kitchen. We pray, Father, that you will be with us. Grant us your help, your fruitfulness as I work on these recipes, as my viewers later try on, as we trust you for a wonderful season this year. Please be with me, be with my viewers. Glorify your name in our lives as we seek to practice hospitality this season for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me begin by saying you don't have to do all these recipes, especially if you're limited on in terms of people who can help, you can actually pick three or four that you can work with for your breakfast. But now we are beginning with yogurt. We are making it at home. That's why I am using yogurt that is store-bought and that has life cultures to be able to work on my yogurt. As you saw, I boiled my milk, cooled it to uh, warmth, you know, just that warmth that wouldn't burn you, mixed in the yogurt, Put it in that container, covered it, and then covered it with a warm blanket or duvet overnight. And the next day it will be ready, but we will see that later on. So that's what I did. Now, in the morning, I began working on my cake that we are going to bake on the Jiko in a very simple way, as you will see. Now that most of us travel up country, and many times you may not have our ovens up country, so a Jiko will do. And I'm doing it very simple. I'm working on a red velvet cake. Again, the link of how I do this is in the description. Even the yogurt one, the link is in the description if you want the exact measurements of the ingredients. So I am working on a cake now that um, many, especially younger generation children, I appreciate cake a lot. So once I am done with mixing up everything, we are going to bake it on our jiko as you will see and we are doing it very simple it's not complicated at all and i'm sure you will enjoy this particular cake for christmas again we are doing without a blender and this will just take you a few minutes. Most of the cakes we do on this channel are very simple to make. They are not complicated at all. You don't need a blender to do them. So we will grease the pan we will use. I'm going to bake them in two batches. So I will begin with the first one where I will bake half the dough. And then as we prepare the other ingredients, it will bake and then we will bake the second one. So half of the dough will go into our pan and then we will leave the other half after this one has baked. So just swirl it to ensure that it is evenly spread out in your pan. And now let's go and bake it on the jiko. I am covering with a wider lid so that we can place our charcoal on top. 
my Jiko was well lit. So what I did, I removed most of the coals and put it on my lid as, and I just left very few coals down there as you can see because the jiko is already hot enough it's going to bake our cake and then we will simply cover it with the lid that is full of hot coals that's about a one and a half cup flour cake so while it's baking we now get to preparing our bread because we need some rolls and this will take time because the yeast needs to proof so again the, dis the recipe for this simple bread is in the description where I show you how to bake bread on the jiko I have used the exact measurements I used in that recipe but I have only uh, that one is two cups this one is three cups so just do the math and you will get the actual ingredients that I used for this particular one so we will mix it again our if you go to that recipe you will notice again our recipes are very simple to mix they just take a few minutes and you're ready with your dough so i kneaded it as much as i could and now i just gathered it up as i'm doing with a simple bread knife and then we will cover place it in a warm place in the kitchen or out in the sun and allow it to proof at least for an hour you could beat it down and let it rise again or if you don't have time just let it proof once or you can do a microclimate that I normally do on this channel again I will link the shots of how I proof my dough on a cold day when it's not warm so while it is proofing we will go ahead and work on our our meat pie pastry again a very simple one I have used three cups of flour one teaspoon of salt and then I have rubbed in one tablespoon of margarine you can also use butter and then I've just used very cold water to make sure I have a soft dough This is 30 minutes later, so I took a break to check on our cake. It is ready. As you can see, the top has risen very well and it's ready. When it's on the jiko, sometimes it will break on the top, but thankfully we will trim it when we need to frost it. So just repeat the same process with the remaining dough and that's what I've done. And while it is baking, I have allowed that dough to rest for a few minutes in the fridge so that it still remains cold because as you know pastry works very well with very cold conditions. So I've spread it out to that rectangular shape and mentally divided it into three parts. So the first two parts cover them again with two tablespoons of margarine or butter and then the part that you haven't covered as you saw let it flip over to one part and then flip the other part over as you saw me do really I hope you saw what I did and then I am just making sure that I'm sealing in the margarine or butter whatever you have used and then spreading it out as well and once I have spread it out again I fold the same way as you saw me do and then I will repeat the process again and now what I did is I covered it in cling film and I placed it in I placed it in my freezer for it to freeze for about 20 minutes so as it was doing that I went ahead to prepare the casserole egg casserole that we are working on a very simple one with those vegetables that you saw uh, this is uh, one that I will share on the channel very soon and when I do I will link it in the description So with about two to three tablespoons of salad oil fry the one large onion you cut up in small pieces Once it gets tender like you have seen it do add in half a teaspoon of salt and some black pepper you can add in half a teaspoon or if people don't like black pepper in your household you can do without or you can put in very little we will add in those potatoes that I have cut up in small pieces they are actually two large potatoes don't put any water 
give them about a minute after you have evenly mixed in in the onion just give them about a minute or two actually two minutes by the way i did two minutes and they were ready because they are tiny but firm you don't want them to get too soft we will add in our red paper i have used a medium size red paper if it's big you could use half and then stir it in to the potato mixture until for about a minute and then now stir in your spinach i have used about seven leaves of large <laughs> leaves of spinach so it's just about that amount of spinach so stir it in until it's evenly stirred and then cover and allow it to cook for a minute or two we don't want our vegetables to overcook so that's about a minute or two later now just give them a final stir and now they are ready you don't have to cover because you want them to cool as you beat up your eggs We are going to use about 8 to 10 eggs. Again, my daughters had already beaten that up as I was working on the vegetables. So we will add in half a teaspoon of salt and then we will add in our vegetables. So it's a very tasty dish by the way and I'm glad that I can show you how to make it without an oven because most casseroles are done in the oven but you can bake it on the jiko very comfortably so let's give it a stir until all the ingredients are evenly mixed and once we have done that we will go ahead and grease our pan I am using a pan that's about 11 inches if it's smaller you may probably need to bake twice uh, or, or make less of what we have done perhaps half the ingredients I have used and you will see the exact measurement in that recipe I will link below once I've posted it on the channel so grease it and then dust it and then on the top sprinkle mozzarella cheese this is homemade but you can buy mozzarella cheese and just sprinkle about half half a cup to one cup of cheese and then bake like you saw me do again just uh, with a few coals below cover it with uh, a lid that's having most of the coals and give this 30 minutes once you have done 30 minutes your egg casserole is actually ready as you can see looking very delightful and it was also very tasty so that's another meal that is ready Now, as all that was happening, our bread dough proofed and then I beat it down and allowed it to rise again. But I, like I told you, you don't have to do it twice. We will now knead it some more, like I'm doing, and then grease our pan. Again, this pan of sufuria, it might just be about 10 to 11 inches. I found that one sufficient to bake our three cup flour bread recipe so again grease it and then dust it like i have done and then as you knead the dough divide it into eight pieces i believe that was eight pieces that i did and then just arrange them in your pan and once you've arranged them cover and allow them to proof for about 15 minutes 15 to 20 minutes so as we are allowing them to proof, we will go ahead and work on our meat pie filling. I already did this meat uh, because I meal prep, but if you're not meal prepping, just fry it with onion, garlic, ginger, some salt, and some black pepper. And then once it's ready, we will work with those vegetables. So I mixed these vegetables with two tablespoons of salad oil. That is the half a big red pepper, half a big uh, yellow bell pepper, as well as some spring onion. 
that I mixed in and gave them a minute to cook and then added salt, added some roiko, added some paprika and then added some black pepper which I mixed up and allowed them to just mix in and cook and then I now added in my pre-cooked meat and I told you how I did it with just red onion, garlic, fresh garlic, fresh ginger and some black pepper and salt and then mixed in to that mixture and then that was ready as our filling for the meat pies by the way it was very simple and yet very tasty so there we go again brushing our bread after those 20 15 to 20 minutes brushed it with some egg wash and then went ahead and baked it i told you i just am baking the way you saw me do in the other recipes where i am baking on the jiko we are now working on our meat pies. By the way, I need to say that this flaky pastry, I repeated that folding process after 20 minutes, returned it in the freezer, and I did it for about four times so that it could form layers. For the full recipe, I will link it below so that you know exactly what I am saying. So now I'm using the filling we have just prepared and folding it into my flake my pastry and then just using a fork press really hard so that it can be able to seal in the filling like that and it's going to form very nice layers especially when you repeat that folding process every 20 minutes after you have removed it from the freezer but if you don't have a freezer um want to believe that you can still be able to repeat this process as you allow it to rest in a cool place for about 20 minutes but covered in clean film so that the dough or the pastry doesn't dry out. So here we go now, we've done 30 minutes. You can see that bread has browned really nicely. So I should have actually done about 25 minutes because then it would have had an even better golden color. So there goes again another recipe that is ready that we can have as a Christmas breakfast. Very soft and very nice. So I've greased my pan, again that 11 inch pan that I'd used before for the egg and I am going to arrange four of the pieces in there because my dough produced about eight and then cook them for 30 minutes. We've done about 30 minutes now uh, and uh, I'm going to just turn them over because on the jiko they don't really brown the way they would do in the oven. They just brown slightly. But when I turned them and allowed them about 10 minutes, that's how they came out. I removed some of the coals from the top and added them to the jiko so that they could sustain a fire under for the 10 minutes and they were able to brown like you saw and they were very nice. We now get to our granola recipe again a delightful one that children like we have it again on the channel and i'll link it below so that you can see the exact measurements but that's how i made it i mixed i mixed honey i mixed peanut butter i mixed salad oil and some salt and i brought it to a boil and then i added in the oats that are or, had already roasted for five minutes on the pan before and I added in my crown nuts that were already roasted and then just used that procedure you can see to have very delightful granola I added in my dried fruit after it had cooled somewhat you will love that recipe but you can check it out on the channel and then I went ahead to fry my sausages for about 20 minutes on low fire but I kept turning them every 5 minutes so that they could evenly cook and as they were doing so I was working on a very simple recipe of juice that I'll also share in the description once I have posted it on the channel that's just mango, fresh ginger, some lemon and sugar and water 
and we had very delightful juice. This was the next day we were working on our recipes so our yogurt was ready as you can see so we only added some strawberry essence together with the sugar that we needed and my daughters are working on it they stirred it up and our yogurt was ready this one is one that doesn't miss on most Kenyan menus for Christmas mandazi because you will keep having guests coming in and mandazis are just wonderful as a standby meal to serve guests that come during that season either during the Christmas day or after that they are very handy again I will share my recipe that of how I make my mandazi again very simple and I'll also share another one where I, you can make just the basic mandazi recipe when you don't have all the ingredients so that's just some footage of what I have done the casserole the rolls the granola <laughs> the sausages the juice the yogurt and of course some tea so I'm sure all these recipes would be sufficient even if you had a big group for them to eat some and people will eat a little a little at a time well and get satisfied now listen to my daughter having fun just telling you about the granola I thought let me capture this on camera so good check them out here so so good mm. So when we had eaten all, we went ahead with uh, my girls to ice the cake so that it would act like our dessert. Uh, and my daughter worked on that, uh, frosted the cake, and we enjoyed it a great deal, as I'm sure you will. We have some frosting recipes on the channel, or you can buy pre-made frostings in your store. And I'm sure you'll come up with a very, very delightful cake. But as you know, you don't have to frost your cake. You can still enjoy it without frosting. So I hope those recipes have been helpful in just giving you some ideas so that you can make your Christmas season wonderful and a blessing. I'm hopeful you enjoyed this video as you journeyed along with me as we worked on those recipes, very delightful ones. You could check out this video right here where I started this series last year and I did breakfast for Christmas that I hope you will also enjoy because it also has several other ideas of what we did when we did that video last year. So look out for our next one, a very exciting one that I'm sure you will enjoy. Again, just having the theme of this season and until that next video thank you for being here bye